I think the biggest challenge for rare disease is finding as a parent when you're newly diagnosed that there isn't a treatment that will work that you often have to start from scratch. There's kind of always this this feeling that if we don't move quickly enough that there are children's lives at stake. Rare diseases are rare to the point that for most of them, there is no business model. Who is incentivized to make new treatments when they're not going to get a return on that? I think it's going to take establishing key centers like we have here at the Jackson Laboratory to bring together academics, foundations, and clinicians motivated by bridging the gap between research and therapeutics. Jackson Lab has been in rare diseases for a very long time, providing the world resources to study rare diseases. But we haven't really done it in a concerted way. And so what we've done just in the last 18 months is build a rare disease translational center. At the Jackson Laboratory, we're trying to think of treating rare diseases slightly differently because the treatments for rare diseases, the most powerful ones, I believe, are going to be the genetic treatments that we have. Treat the, the mutation itself at the level of the gene. Oftentimes these diseases, because they are so rare, not as a lot is known about the diseases or the genes that cause them. So oftentimes we're kind of working with a black box. So at the Jackson Lab, what we end up doing is taking the mutations that we know are in patients and creating an avatar, which is the mouse model, that allows us to study the disease itself and then allow us to say, will these therapeutics have an effect um, in using the mouse model? We can make them particularly useful for strategies such as um, gene editing, gene therapy, or even ASO-based strategies, which are becoming more common. We really want to take the therapeutics to the clinic so that we could go to the FDA and say, we think that we have a therapeutic that's really going to work. The patients are the center of what it is we do. They're a part of our weekly meetings, they're a part of our monthly meetings, they're a part of our updates. I can learn a lot more about the disease when I talk to the patients and the family members. And at the same time, we can hopefully teach them a little bit how to do the preclinical testing for a therapeutic. We include the patients and their families in the discussions when it comes to designing the studies, getting information on what's impacting the patients and their families, things that'll help to address the quality of life issues the families and the patients themselves are facing. When our daughter Susanna was diagnosed um, when she was two, she's now nine, we would uh, you know, go to conferences and find people and we would say, can you help us? Can you help us find a, a therapeutic? The first answer was always, well, do you have a mouse? Uh, my wife had this uh, pretty great idea to um, create videos. It kind of went viral. We need a mouse! We need a mouse! Funny, 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 funny mouse! And then one day, my phone rang. And I picked it up, and it was Kat. Uh, Kat said, I guess, Luke, what I'm trying to tell you is that we will do this for the families. And right now, we're fortunate enough that uh, our daughter's in a clinical trial, and it is really hopeful. And all of that really started with Kat and the Jackson Laboratory. Rose, my youngest, was just born differently. And like millions of other families, we go through the diagnostic odyssey. My neurologist said, you know, Casey, your daughter has a rare genetic disease. There's no cure. There's nothing we can do. For many of these diseases, it's not a science problem. The drug for my daughter will not make enough money for a, a pharma company to commercialize. In our uh, scientific team at Takira Rose Foundation, one of our scientists, Wendy Chung, mentioned Jackson Labs. And so we started on a rosy mouse. Very soon, we go into our first group of mice with an ASO that we developed for Rose's uh, disease. My daughter, Annabelle, was diagnosed with alternating hemiplegia of childhood when she was two years old. We decided that it, it would be our mission to kind of unite a, a community that already existed um, and kind of refocus efforts from basic science onto a more therapeutically um, focused path. Because we are pursuing a whole portfolio of different um, therapeutic strategies in parallel, we really do need kind of a hub to keep all of those projects working and communicating with each other, and we have really found that hub in JAX. 
We started pursuing one therapy with Jackson that's kind of mushroomed into this whole program where we're able to look at multiple different therapeutic strategies in parallel at Jax. Collaboration and knowledge sharing is um, not just important, it's everything to, to the center. Once we have a mouse model, once we've characterized it, once we know um, that information is out, it's published in our catalog. Um, you don't have to wait for a paper in a journal or go through the peer-reviewed process. The data is just there. We can't be experts in everything, and so we rely on our collaborative partners to um, provide insight and making sure that we've got the right tests, the right assays on board when we're starting to evaluate these mouse phenotypes. The Jackson Labs partnership is actually central to everything that we're doing preclinically uh, and is actually one of the big differentiators for our company because instead of simply contracting the mouse work out to someone, uh, what we're doing is really bringing the best thinkers about how to use mouse models uh, into our programs through the collaboration with JAX, and that, and that is just a game changer for us. The genetic therapies that we're discovering, that we're, we're improving and we're refining um, are really quite new. And how do we get it into mainstream medicine? Well, you're going to do it with rare diseases. Very, very challenging, heterogeneous, multifactorial things we call common diseases often have, in some people, components that are due to um, those same genes that cause other rare diseases with just different mutations. Imagine a day um, where we treat Alzheimer's patients with some of these genetic therapeutics so that that person never manifests that disease. I think what's most motivating is the impact that we can have on the patient community. It's another thing to take the incredible science that you're doing and affect you know, a population of, of people with rare diseases, even if it's only one person. They're so present in our community. It's actually the, 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 the staff and the, and the people and the scientists at Jackson Laboratory and CAT who come to our conferences, who come to our events, and who hug our kids. So we are just eternally grateful.